welcome to the Small Business Development Center's webinar, Google's Move to GA4. Um, and I'd like to introduce Jerry Denniston. She is a, a business analyst for the Maricopa Small Business Development Center. And Jerry, take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And I'm just going, as Karen said, we're talking about Google's change for the um, to, to GA4, Google Analytics 4. But before we get started, I'd like to just give a little bit of a background on the SBDC for those of you who may not be familiar with the SBDC. Um, we are part of a national and state network of small business development centers, and our main offering is no-fee confidential counseling. So here in Maricopa County, we're the lead center with roughly 10, 15 counselors across the county. We mostly work virtual, but we do see clients in person by appointment only. At the end of our session today, we're going to discuss, I'll, I will share how you can actually request counseling if you're not a current client. But we are able to offer our services at no cost or low cost because of, of the funding that we receive from the Small Business Administration on the on a federal level and um, locally here being hosted by Maricopa County Community Colleges and partnering with the Arizona Commerce Authority. And Bob Theobald is with us today just to say a few words about the Arizona Commerce Authority and our partnership. So, Bob, would you like to unmute? Hello, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I, I'm looking forward to this session as well. There's uh, Google Analytics, it's always changing, so I like to, to stay on top of that. But we're excited to be here, as you can see on, on the screen. Um, uh, again, I'm Robert Theobald or Bob Theobald. Um, some people call me Bob, some call me Robert. You can call me either. Most of the SBDC calls me Bob. Um, but at the bottom of the screen, you see our logo down there, real small areas on the Commerce Authority. Uh, we are the state's economic development organization, and I'm the small business ombudsman and vice president of small business services here. And we work very closely with the SBDCs throughout the state. Uh, we partner with them on doing workshops, participating in workshops, hosting them, et cetera, um, and also working with the businesses in their local areas to help support the growth of the communities throughout the state and growing Arizona's economy. Um, one of the things we do that I wanted to share here is we have a called the Small Business Boot Camp. It's an educational webinar series that we host every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, we've been doing it for three years. We've got a, a great uh, content library that's part of it from all the previous recordings of those webinars. And we have a pretty amazing lineup coming up in the next uh, couple months, um, one of which is this team will be on our webinar talking about chat GPT and small business on July 18th. Um, but to help you guys find those, I'm gonna put here in the chat, I just posted in the chat the link to our small business boot camps, and you can see the upcoming sessions. And then at the bottom of that page, you can see the content library as well. Uh, so that's one of those web pages. You wanna open it and then favorite it so you can access it easy. Uh, because there's a lot of great upcoming educational webinars that we'll be hosting uh, with experts from around the state. But uh, I want to thank Jerry and her team for letting me come on for a few minutes and share that information. And again, we partnered closely with them, and I appreciate that partnership. So Jerry, it's back to you. Thanks, Bob. And it is, I mean, do copy that link and, um, and favorite it in your browser because it's a really great resource with lots of good webinars um, and, and other resource materials. So let's move on today. What our topics are going to be um, just the difference between Google Analytics and GA4 and um, and what are the some of the new features in GA4 and, and then also how you can make the switch, because it's really important that you do this. Our speaker today, as Karen said, I'm I'm Jerry Denniston. I'm with the Maricopa SBDC. Our speaker today is Kevin Frost. He is a partner, a certified Google partner. He owns Standing 360 Digital, um, which is a, his own business, which specializes in business IT for small businesses, SEO, marketing, that sort of thing. One of his specialties is really dealing with the Google Maps and Apple Maps issues. So we have a lot of clients here that have had issues with Google Maps. They've changed locations or you know, some, they've, they've um, tried to update their location on Google Maps and it has not worked. Well, Kevin 
has a solution for that. He's very good at proving to Google that um, your business is across the street and not where Google thinks it is. So um, that's one of the resources that he provides. So Kevin, I'm going to turn it over to you and go ahead and share your screen. I'll stop sharing mine. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, introduction, Jerry. Yeah. Let me go ahead and get this screen shared and going for everyone too, so they can kind of see what's going on here. All right, so in the chat, I'm also gonna share another link as well. This is a handout for going over some of the stuff that we're talking about today. It works off of Google's uh, slides. So if you don't already have a Google account, it's free. I do recommend checking it out. Um, all right, so today the big topic that we're talking about is Google Analytics. It's something that is not only important for anyone that has a website, a mobile app or uh, really anything dealing with the online side, you want to track it and keep score of it. Um, and so it's really important to make sure that those analytics or those numbers and that data that you're receiving from your customers or just people in general, um, that you have a place for it to sit. And Google Analytics is kind of that. This link that I shared with you guys, this is a handout that Google has come up with itself. I'm a growth Google partner. And so Google does share this information with me so I can help share it with you as well. Um, it goes over how to make better business decisions with analytics, a whole course about Google Analytics and how analytics is organized and even more information, uh, how, how is mapping out smart goals and even some additional resources. Now, before I dive into all of this stuff, let's actually go over the presentation. Um, when it comes to Google Analytics, it's really important. There we go. See everyone's seen my notes there. It's all right. I don't look at them too much anyways. But it's important to know what kind of goal you're looking for here. Um, step one is to actually have a website or something that you can start using to start tracking and getting analytics from. Um, and the reason why having a goal is so important first is because you want to know why it is that you're tracking all of these different pieces of data that you get online. Um, and even before I jump into that, I wanted to talk about like in sports, let's say soccer or football, for example, if we didn't keep track of the score between the two teams, a lot less people would be interested in watching sports. Um, it's just a, a, a commonality that people would probably get bored. Um, you would never know who wins at the end of it. So in general, it's important to kind of keep score and keep track of the things that are happening in your day to day life um, and especially with your business's analytics. So before we go into those details, take a moment and really think about what is your business's goals and related to what you want your customers to do when they visit your website or use your uh, digital products. So sometimes it's increasing your sales, which is pretty general, but it might, instead of just generating sales, it could be that you're needing more leads in general. Um, instead of leads, it could be that you just want phone calls. You wanna make sure that your phone is ringing with customers or people asking questions. Oftentimes, if you're a restaurant, it could be just foot traffic. You wanna see that there is actual people, uh, new people and, and more customers coming directly into your store, maybe from uh, your online resources. So traffic could be your main goal or just increasing downloads. If you have an e-commerce page that you just sell digital content, um, it's still very doable. And using Google Analytics is a great way to do that. So there are all these things that you can really track with Google Analytics, but it's really good to start with a SMART goal. And if you're unfamiliar with SMART goals, we'll kind of go over it a little bit here as well. Um, but create those goals and use those intermediate steps through that SMART goals that will lead to increased sales. So it really helps you build and make additional profits by using Google Analytics, or at least it'll help you understand where those profits are coming from. Think about what the steps that a customer's, what you want your customer's journey to look like. You want them to find you on social media, end up on your webpage, and then end up in your store? Or do you want them just to end up on your website and you just to stay there? Um, it all depends, depending on the type of business you have. To so really frame your goals around these tools, uh, and then you'll use these tools to really monitor your progress. Again, keeping track, your scoreboard, you wanna see what it looks like. So if you already have a website, there is a way to track that progress. Um, but if you don't, you can still set this up. It just won't be keeping track of anything. So those who haven't yet created a website, think about the path that you might want a customer 
to take before buying a product or utilizing your services and be sure that website actually works and make it easy as and make it as, as easy as possible so that way consumers don't get lost or stuck in between cracks all right what is google analytics if you're already familiar with it don't worry you'll probably learn a few things here but if you're unfamiliar with it google analytics is a reporting tool it's really a no cost google product like a, a variety of them um, google is a is a great company to definitely align your business with Specifically, even, even if you're just utilizing Google Analytics, it could be the only thing that you need from them. But Google Analytics really helps you understand what the visitor's behavior is on your website. It lets you see how customers found your website or app, and it also allows you to track those conversions um, specifically on your website. Like, are they calling you from the website? Are they clicking buttons on certain pages? Are they submitting a form, signing up for a newsletter, scheduling an appointment? All of that. So Google Analytics. Why use it? Well, I've already kind of went over a, a good, re good couple reasons, but it's important to understand what customers' visits are really like and how they behave on your website. Understanding your customers from the business's point of view and looking at it from the consumer's eyes um, or their point of view is really important. It allows you to learn what things are important to them, which will allow you to change your marketing strategy accordingly. So ultimately, Google Analytics really just helps you make those better business decisions that could make those more uh, that that make you that much more money. Which sometimes that is the primary goal, but maybe if you're a nonprofit, it's just to get that information or that one form signed and completed, so that way you can help those consumers out there. Yeah, in general, Google Analytics won't give you information about the individual people visiting your website, but it'll allow you to gather information about how groups of people with similar characteristics behave on your website. So again, using analytics is really important. It's free, it's a great resource to have, and it really allows you to keep track of the score. But using, use your Google Analytics to understand what content your audience is most interested in, and it allows you to evaluate which channels drive the most conversion. So again, it, whether it's social media, email marketing, uh, SEO, or search engine results, um, it's, it's important to know what's working. And that way, you know where you need to put more money in to, uh, to, to determine, you know, again, what that end goal is. So before we dive into too much more about the actual details of the Google Analytics, let's discuss versions. So if you set up Google Analytics, like if you set it up a long time ago, back in like October 2020, it's more than likely that you set up an older version called Google Analytics 3 or Universal Analytics or uh, Google Analytics UA, sometimes is what it's called. The product started to really evolve late 2020, and now it's turned into a new version called Google Analytics 4. But the issue is, is that it doesn't automatically update or it doesn't automatically transfer from Google Analytics 3 or Universal Analytics to Google Analytics 4. Google Analytics 4 does replace Universal Analytics, but if you're using uh, Universal Analytics now, it's time to make the switch. Do not wait until July 1st, 2023, because any new data flowing into your website or a new consumer that's visiting your website, they won't, uh, analytics won't keep track of that past July 1st, which is the end of this month. So by, by the end of this month, Universal Analytics, um, it's not necessarily going away. It just will no longer work. So. Google Analytics 4 has several advantages though. It's a lot more privacy focused and it's designed to adapt as the technology landscape has continued to adapt and evolve. It also uses machine learning to uh, really let you see more insights about what's happening and what that customer journey looks like. Finally, you can see additional reports. You can see more website activity or app activity if you have a mobile app. Um, and it's all uses the same interface though. So how you can tell which analytic version you have, usually with the, uni uh, the universal analytics property ID, it starts with that UA. Uh, for example, like it's UA dash, usually nine numbers and, and another dash and a number. 
but Google Analytics 4 specifically will have just numbers. There's no UA in front of it. And I actually have it pulled up here. This is my own website, the analytics for standing 360 virtual tour. You can see that it says GA4 and it has in those parentheses just this. So if you do have universal analytics or you already have analytics, um, I recommend Googling it. Uh, analytics, Google Analytics, log in the right account, make sure that's important you're actually using the right Gmail account. Click on your admin panel and it should be able to see this page exactly this. So again, make sure you click on that admin and on here, the property itself, you can see that this one specifically is GA4. And that is the new version that you want to make sure you're using. So again, make sure you look at that number on the property name to identify what property type it is. So let's go over and actually create a new property here, and I'll show you what it looks like if you're creating it. Now, since Universal Analytics doesn't just switch over to Google Analytics 4, what I actually recommend is instead of using the Setup Assistant, which it will help you go through the process, that is one way of switching over to Google Analytics 4, but you can also just create a new property. In this property, you come up with a name. So let's just say, 360. I'll use my own business's name in this case. There we go. Make sure the currency for the right type of dollar uh, that you're using, and at least somewhere close by you in the reporting time zone. This is what it thinks. There we go. Next. In here, you don't have to select all of these specific industries and all these details. Um, it's important to have at least something. The only required is the actual industry type. Let's just say here's electronics for this case and choose the business objectives. So what it is that you're trying to do. And again, it's just trying to help you organize what your goal is for all of this. So let's just say generate leads. Now, this is the platform type. If you have a website, you got to make sure you click web. If it's a specifically an app on Android or iOS, then that you can go through those process. It's basically the same, but it's customizing that Google Analytics um, uh, ID for you. So on here, um, again, it's not as important to, uh, to have the exact website in here, but for your business's website, you wanna make sure that you use the business's URL. Let's do kind of weird, but my, my business's name, um, is different than my website's name. So it's 360 virtual tours, ac.com. And then in here, you can just say my website's G or analytics. Here, create stream. And it's as simple as that. Now you've used. Google Analytics to set up a new stream. Now, this is walking you through um, installing your Google tag. If you use popular CMS or content management systems like WordPress, Shopify, Wix, Squarespace, I mean, there's so many of them out there, Drupal, um, it all depends on what platform the website is, uh, how to actually install it. So you can use Google tags which is up right here. It'll actually show you some instructions to install the code of the Google Analytics into the head of the website. And if you're unfamiliar with coding at all, don't worry, you don't have to know code to get this set up. But if you do and you are familiar, this will go in the head of it. And for anyone who's unfamiliar with HTML or the stuff that makes up a website, the code specifically, you have a header, which is sometimes where data goes into, and then the body, which is most of the website that you see, and then there's that footer. So you want to make sure that tag code goes in the head. But if you're using more, some of the more popular uh, uh, CSMs, or sorry, CMS, you can just copy this measurement ID and embed it or put it in the right spot for your website. And a right away, it'll start tracking customers' data that they're what they're doing on your website and, and where they're coming from. So it all depends on what website type you have, which will ultimately determine where that management ID or the sorry, the measurement ID goes. And if you are, if you don't have one of those websites that you can just dump the measurement ID, that's where then you'll have to use the tag manager in here. 
So there's instructions up here, and there's also some instructions down here as well. So this is how to install your Google tag. That's that website. And then again, it'll walk you step by step to get in there and ensure that it's set up properly. Now, if you need to set it up manually, this is that code that you would install. Sometimes people, if you're working with a developer, you can just have this automatically embedded into the website. Now, I saw a question that says, if you use Wix, where would the measurement ID go? Um, usually it's in the admin section of the website. Uh, sometimes it's in the develop, developer section, but it's usually on the left-hand side. Click on the admin or settings. And then you can either, if it has a search bar, you can use a search and just type in analytics. And more often than not, it'll show you where on the website you have to go to actually install the G, G4 analytics or just Google Analytics number in general. Now, if you are using a tag manager and let's say you have multiple uh, websites, let me go back here. There we go. If you have multiple websites that you want to use that same tag, uh, you can actually set up something called the Google Tag Manager. And now I don't do this because it gets complicated pretty quickly, but if you're someone who has multiple websites and they're all on Google Universal Analytics, update them to, uh, you can just update the analytics to the fourth version, so Google Analytics 4, and set it up so that each website uses that same Universal Analytics code all set up through tags. And again, that's a pretty lengthy process, so I won't be going through how to do it, but that is a way to do it. Let me get back over to this real quick. So those are the differences between GUA and G4, or GA4, um, but it is important to switch over. If you do not make the switch, any new data received does not transfer over. And it's also important to know that if you don't have it, like let's say you set it up, but then you don't take that ID and install it, after July 1st, at least really the end of this month, um, you will no longer be receiving any data on your websites. It's really important to get this set up as soon as you can. So again, Google Analytics 4 is the newest version and the version you'll want to use currently. All right, Kevin. Just, yeah. There, um, there are just a few questions here if you could go. Um, if it's okay to interrupt you. Um, so there's a question about if you're using HubSpot, can you insert the measurement ID on that somewhere on HubSpot? Yes, yes, you can. I have done it before on HubSpot as well. Um, it's also important to know as well as you can have Google Analytics 3 or Google Analytics Universal set up as well as Google uh, UA4. So sorry. Okay. G okay. A four. <laughs> you can okay. have them both set up at the same time. That is okay as well. Okay. And then there was a question about the stream name. Someone didn't understand. Genevieve didn't understand what the stream name is supposed to be. If you could clarify that. It's it's not. Uh, it's it's so that you can understand where the stream is or what that stream is coming from. So some people just use their business's name. Other people want it more segmented out. If it's a specific section of your business that you're doing. Um, that's just what the stream name is for. So it's really an internal naming convention for you exactly. to know what the what this is related to. Correct. Okay. And then when you set up the G4 stream, does it mean the data from the last few years is lost? Yes. So Google Analytics doesn't keep data forever as well. And I'll go over actually a quick tip at the uh, before I'm finished today on okay. way that a way that you can actually extend it when you're looking at previous history as well. Okay, so another question. Mul um, Rebecca has multiple websites. What are the pros and cons of using the tag manager to track them all? If you're using the same GA4 analytic code on multiple websites, all of that data is getting then tracked all together in one place. So if it's like the same business type that you do, but maybe different businesses in different states, um, you'd want them all organized so that way you could see the conversions. Let's say if you're an e-commerce website or something like that, you can see what those same conversion rates are depending on the city and state for that product. But if your businesses are like completely different, it's in most cases better to set it up to where um, they all have their own unique analytic ID. So that way you can keep track of the different 
uh, data points that come in and the conversions that come in um, to those individual businesses. So kind of separating the businesses out. Okay, so so I, if I'm understanding correctly, what you're saying is if you have multiple websites and they have different focuses, it's better to have a different tag manager for each one so that you can track the data unique to each website. Whereas if you use the same tag manager across all the websites, it's Google's going to simply merge them all under that tag manager and you won't necessarily know which the data that's coming for website one versus website three? So Google Analytics is you want to create different, you know, anal, uh, sorry, different analytic properties depending on businesses. The tag manager itself is just how to a, a way to organize your Google tags. So that way, if you have multiple properties or you're trying to condense them all into one, you can use this, which is a whole separate um, entity than Google Analytics just Google Tag Manager um, to get those all set up. So it's just kind of going over, um, this is a good way to organize your tags. Well, this is a good place to kind of create the actual analytics data streams. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the questions and the curiosity. Keep them coming. So if, if you're getting set up with Google Analytics for the first time, you can go through that step-by-step -step process like we created and you don't even have to worry about universal analytics. Um, it's not something that you should create, just make sure you're using Google Analytics for. Um, but this will kind of go through a quick setup process for you. Um, but if you're using a website builder platform, uh, like I said, often called the CMS, it may not yet be set up to accept the new property ID format. So in that case, you'll need to set up the Google Analytics for, for your website directly. Um, and the link on this slide is just a Help Center article explaining how the link to the new Google Analytics with a variety of plat popular platforms. So let me see if I can g.co slash grow. Sorry, I should have had this up for you guys already. But what this does is depending, like, so somebody asked a question for Wix, you can actually just go on here and see, okay, which platform accepts the Google tag ID and it'll actually walk you through hey, I have Wix, this is the exact steps I need to take in order to get it set up. Let's say if you use GoDaddy as the platform, it'll walk you through that steps and where to do it and how to do it specifically for GoDaddy's website. So this is a great place um, to come to if you're trying to figure out where your website uh, Google Analytics ID needs to go. And I'll actually copy and paste this into the chat as well. There you go. But yeah, that just kind of helps you understand where you need to go to put that ID um, and to get it set up. So this is going over how to migrate it. Again, you can go through that setup assistant and it'll walk you through it pretty, I mean, it's kind of common sense, but it'll, it'll walk you through there for sure. Uh, but I do recommend just creating a new property because Google Analytics won't transfer over the old stuff from your universal analytics anyways. So in some cases, it's just better to set up manually. But it's also important to know, just because you set up a new one doesn't mean that the old one goes away. So you will not lose your old data here. The older versions of Google Analytics will continue to collect the data until July 2nd. So after July 1st, it won't. But up till July 2nd, it will still be collecting data. So after that date, though, any new data will only appear in the Google Analytics 4 reports. Many accounts have the options to use Google Analytics 4 Setup Assistant. Um, but yeah, you just have to log in. Make sure you click on that admin. That's that gear icon when you log in. And then it'll go over uh, the Setup Assistant. And it'll, you can see it right there. If you cannot use the Setup Assistant, though, there are, there are some detailed instructions later on. But now, let's say you got it set up. What now? What does it track? What does it look like? Um, if you're on the home page and you just open up Google Analytics and you already have one that's up and running, this is what the home page will look like. It really just shows you the information based on past behaviors of your consumers and what they do on your website. It also allows you to navigate all around analytics so you can continue to scroll down and, and see a bunch more. Um, but before I move on, I'll point out one feature and it's the search box at the top of the page. 
This actually connects you to a tool called analytics intelligence, which makes it really easy to find any answers you're looking for. So we'll learn more about it in a, in a second. But before that, let's explore some of the different kinds of reports you actually get with Google Analytics. So the information gathered by Google Analytics goes into a variety of customized reports. And sometimes it can be a little daunting because you don't know what is what and what things mean. But all of this reporting just lets you see all that valuable data about the users and consumers and what their behaviors are across the website and any mobile apps that you have. So we'll go over a couple of the reports. We'll go over the real-time one, acquisition, engagement, monetization, retention, and then finally about the tech, like what devices and browsers they're using. So I'll go over this somewhat quickly, but I do recommend getting this set up and checking it out for yourself. But in almost any type of report you create, you can customize many of the options. Sometimes people are afraid to customize. Don't be fearful of that. It's worth making sure that the report looks right for you. So uh, once you're done customizing though, you can even use filters and narrow down the information if you have a ton of data coming your way. Uh, but ultimately you can compare the two different kinds of data sets um, such as visitors this month versus visitors last month. Um, one quick note, though, to keep in mind is that the numbers shown in Google Analytics are not 100% exact. However, they do, they, they are accurate enough to give you a really solid foundation of understanding what's happening. And the reason why they're not 100% exact is sometimes people use um, uh, a VPN, so it shows that they're coming from a different area, or they use privacy blockers, so you, you can't even see that somebody's visited the website. Um, so because of so many of those different factors that come into play, Google Analytics doesn't capture every single user that has visited your website or interacted with it um, and everything that they do, but it does give you a really good roundabout idea about what's kind of going on. So first we'll took, take a look at that real-time report. And just as it sounds, it lets you monitor all the activity that's happening right as it's happening. So as it is happening, somebody's visiting your website, it'll show you if you click on that real-time report. And again, this is the home icon right underneath of it. This is the reporting icon. And that's what we're talking about right now. The first one that pops up is the real-time. It just shows you what is happening, how many visitors is in the last 30 minutes, whether they're coming directly to your website or if it was referred to from another source. Excuse me. Users or new users, like all of them, uh, or specifically if you, if you have it segmented out by audience, um, all of those different things are pulled up from this real-time reporting. And with these reports, you can immediately and continuously monitor those effects. Like if you set up a new campaign, you can literally just click on it and, and watch the campaign happen in live time. So it's really cool to see the site changes and what the traffic looks like on your website even right now. Um, for example, just a way to use real-time reports is you can gauge the impact of a big marketing campaign. Let's say you did a big social media push this month and you're going to want to see how many times people visit your website. Did it go up? Did it go down? Um, and you might learn a few things that you'd be surprised about. Let's say you did an email blast. I mean, within a couple of minutes, you'd be surprised for how many people start visiting the website from that. All right, so now we've gone over the real-time report. And again, these are all fully customizable, but let's talk about the acquisitions report. Now, this just shows you all the data about how users have arrived to your website. So not what they're doing on it, but how they arrived to you. Kind of gives you an overview of a look on the first-time visitors. Um, are they a returning visitor? Uh, you can even see if they're a brand new visitor came via site search or like via Google search, or if they're a returning user that came in through maybe an email blast. So this gives you that opportunity to spot trends, things that are like constantly happening or happening now that didn't used to happen in the past. But in the slide here that you see, we have uh, 374,000 new users. This is not my website <laughs> that, that I'm showing you. Um, this is actually a website that it's, it's a Google owned website, specifically going over analytics. So there's a lot of users on this website. 
But from this slide, you can see that there's 112,000 from a referral website and 32,000 uh, visitors from cost per click ads, and then 1,300 from an email. So there's a lot of different situations happening here. Organic, this just means that it's unpaid content, your website just showing up on a Google search. And referral is like somebody else's, well, somebody else's website has the link to your website and they came from that link. So it was a referral to your business's website. That's that cost per click ads, and then there's that email. So target acquisition reports show just where users were online right before they arrived on your website. So it kind of shows you where people are coming from, which is really important to know. This engagement report just presents a picture of how people navigate through your website um, and how they're really interacting with it. So you could see if uh, somebody checked an account balance, you could scroll, see if they scrolled quickly through your web page or if they went on it and quickly hopped off, whether they clicked on your product details um, or watched a whole informational video. So it really just shows you what things people are engaged with on your website. Um, any engagement session is a session that lasts 10 seconds or longer, has one or more conversion events, and or has two or more page views. So they went to your home page, and then they also went to your contact us page or more information page and interacted with it for a, another second. You do not want people to hop on your website and immediately hop onto something else and, and do away from your website. Google wants to see that your website is working. So this is just a good way to make sure that the website does have some engagement. Kevin, we have a question about referral traffic. Yeah. Um, does the referral traffic include someone else's email marketing campaign with a link to content on my website? It's a good question. I don't have a direct answer for you. Um, if there is a like an event that you set up previously, like an event tag set up, um, then yes, it will show up as a referral. Otherwise, it'll just have that blank referral status that it was a referral from another link somewhere else that they visited you. Hopefully that answers your question. But I know I know it's a it's not a direct answer because it all depends on how you have analytics set up. Yeah. Something a lot of people care about is, yeah, is monetization. Are people actually buying the products? Really important to know. Again, how are you keeping track? What are you doing to keep track of the score? So if you have an e-commerce website or app, it's really good to know what the monetization reports are. Most of the e-commerce websites will, will show you at a quick glance, like a Shopify website, for example, will show you how much sales you've acquired, um, but you can set up some analytics uh, reports to make sure it shows up as well. So these reports just tell you more than if just people are buying your stuff. In addition, it also shows revenue generated from products, sales, ads, and subscriptions. Um, this report lets you see the number of views for each item you sell and the number of ad impressions, if you have it set up with Google Ads, uh, all through your app. So seeing the ratio between views and purchases for the product can really help you adjust the content to increase sales. So maybe people are not buying this one product, but that one new product that has a great photo, a super high quality image, and it you know has a great selling point, um, that product is doing really, really well. Well, if that's the case, you want to increase the sales of your older product, it might be worth reworking your ad copy. Um, or changing the photo on it to be a little bit more professional, and you'll be surprised. Sometimes having just a new photo of a product does help increase sales. So ultimately, this kind of helps you build those better business decisions using these reports. What is working? What is the score? And if it's selling or not? We have another question. How Absolutely. do I see which networks are included under organic social? Under the organic side, what that's showing is that it's somebody's doing a Google search or let's say a Bing.com search, and it, it was uh, 
it was an option that showed up for them on the organic side. So let me give you an example here. New tab, let's go ahead and open up SBDC. Over here, over here, these results on the left-hand side are organic links. Now this is Google Business Profiles. This is different altogether. These are just questions, but all of these websites are organic results that have shown from a SERP or a search engine's results page. Uh, somebody's typed in these keywords into a search and pulled up these results. So when it comes up as organic, it just means that somebody has found you organically on here and then clicked to visit the website. The social media organic is again, somebody's just searched for you specifically on social media and found you through the search. It wasn't through like a paid social media campaign or it wasn't through pay-per-click or PPC. Um, it wasn't through an ad. It was just organically, your information was there, they found you and they came to you. And so I actually highly recommend for anyone that doesn't already know, focusing on SEO and really the um, free ways of marketing your business. Before you start paying for ads, make sure you show up properly for all of the free ways that you can, um, like getting a Google business profile, setting up your social medias, all of that stuff is free. And by setting that up, it allows you to show up organically. And so that's just kind of what that means. So I think there's a question. The question is really in the Google Analytics. Does it tell you um, if if people came from an organic search on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or Instagram? Are those considered referrals or will actually the Google Analytics tell you they came from the organic search on Facebook? As an example, you're muted. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, no, it, it, it'll, it'll come up just at, through organic social. It doesn't specify which social media channel you have it coming from. But it is something that you can customize. I won't be going into how to customize it. There's a lot of how-to videos on YouTube and other places. Um, even uh, Google Analytics has its own help page try going through the search feature as well. And it can walk you up uh, through certain ways to set it up so that way you can see specifically which way people are coming from. Um, something that I've done previously to, to see where traffic is coming from through the most is setting a call tracking, which is completely different than Google Analytics, but it requires you to set up a unique phone number um, for all of the different social media channels or platforms that you have. So that way you can see which platform you are receiving the most phone calls from. If that is your main goal is to increase phone calls, you kind of want to know where it is that they are coming from. Sometimes if you have your phone number on the web, people just see it and then they call it from their phone number if they're seeing it on a desktop. So if they don't click on that link or they don't click to call, then it doesn't show up as a, an engagement. They just, they dialed it on their phone or through another route. Um, and so that's why sometimes call tracking numbers are, are really good to do as well. So that's that's just another way to specialize where it's coming from. So another question, could you, could you put some kind of a code on a form on your website or on social? So when people clicked on or embedded in a link, I mean, I'm get, we're getting way too detailed here. We're getting a little probably. technical. Um, okay, for, way for too people. Yeah, but it's, okay. it's, it is something that you can set up through Google Analytics, yes. And it would be setting up through the event. Yeah. Okay, so that was another question. Would that be an event? So yes, it would be an event, which is, okay. And are you gonna explain a little bit more about events? Um, it's, it, it gets pretty technical pretty quickly, but going over through the engagement side, you can set it up, um, through the events and then come, you can completely create new events in general. This is, uh, uh, another type of analytics that I've used as well called true conversion. And it'll actually see, it'll, it'll create a video of what a user is doing on your website. So rather than just seeing like the analytics of it, numbers of it, the true conversion will actually have a video recording of what somebody did on your website. Um, and so that's why this is showing up as that. Uh, 
some events come up as default, but I do recommend creating new events that you specialize for your own specific business. Um, and because each business is so unique uh, and what your business goals are could be different from somebody even in the same industry, um, it's important to kind of create those events around with what your needs are and what you're wanting to see. Hopefully, again, that kind of answers it. I know it's not a solid yes or no answer um, or specific answer, but that's kind of how you go through it and make it happen. I've even sometimes seen people set up different landing pages to see if they're coming from different social media pages. Um, so if they're coming from Facebook, it's this one specific landing page that they go to versus uh, Twitter versus somewhere else. Yeah. So there is- Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. Uh, one other report, and again, a lot of times people are coming here to see what the score is, um, is retention. And so you, this just really shows you how loyal customers are and how frequently or how often long-term users are engaging with your website and web content. So in other words, do people visit you again? Do they come back and when and how long did they stay? So remember, while these are not all necessarily exact numbers, they do give you a really reliable and accurate enough uh, information for you to see any trends or any changes about your business. Sorry about the background noise there. But last but not, last but not least, uh, tech reports. What type of technology have your consumers used when they visit you? It's actually a lot more important than you might think. You know, are they on mobile? Of course they're on mobile. Everyone's on mobile now. Some businesses, though, depending on how they're set up, they're not actively targeting mobile users. They're just targeting leads and, and traffic in general. Um, but it's important to know what type of device somebody is using, whether it's a tablet, smartphone, or a desktop. So that way you can customize your images um, and even the website layout so it looks the right way for them. And again, sometimes depending on the certain content management system you use or the different website you use, if you're setting it up for desktop users, it'll by default create a mobile-friendly version for you. But it's still really important to go in to the website and see, click on the mobile view, or if, if you're not already doing it, like if it doesn't have it automatically, um, you can you can actually inspect it and click on the uh, different different ways. You can see the different what the page looks like depending on if they're on a, a mobile phone or if they're on a desktop view. That way you can just see it because sometimes it may look right on the desktop view, but it doesn't look right on the mobile view. Even though it's considered mobile friendly through like test, it's important for you to actually physically look what does it look like on this kind of device. And Google Analytics will show you what type of device they're using. So in this case, they're saying that somebody used Chrome, the browser, to find them. Um, it doesn't go into a lot more detail, but I'll, don't worry, I'll show you guys my, my analytics as well so you can kind of see it. Or it's retention tech. There we go. Excuse me. So right here, you can see that most people are using Windows computers. So I'm not as friendly to Macs, I guess, or iOS users. But iOS is a big proponent. And uh, Android, Linux, Macintosh, Chrome OS. This shows that most people that visit my website are Chrome users. Sometimes people are using Edge, a little bit of Safari, very little Firefox, but it happens. And most people are using a desktop, that means a computer, to find me, a lot less on mobile. So I may have a mobile-friendly website, but that just means that my consumer, my audience, are most often on a computer when they're visiting me. So it's important for me not just to have a mobile-friendly website, but to make sure that it looks perfect for desktop users as well. And again, this is just going over the tech. It even shows you what screen size or screen resolution somebody has when they visit your website. So for me, I, I like looking at this stuff. And so it's like, oh, super interesting to see. A lot of times people do have huge screens when they're check, uh, checking out my website. And then other times they, they don't have as many big screens or as much screen space. And because of that, you can adjust your website's photos and views to correctly show up how you want to 
with what most users are using. And if you want to adjust your consumer flow, you can always adjust that as needed. So again, you can have custom insights via the analytics intelligence. This is what I was talking about earlier in that search bar, but it's just some useful um, AI or analytics intelligence here that I mentioned earlier. So uh, automated insights surface when unusual things change, like emerging trends in your own data, this helps you de detect that stuff. But ultimately, these insights help explain trends, changes, and opportunities that might impact your business. So you can even create custom insights up to 50 per property. So like depending on the websites, up to 50 per that one ID that you've created. Um, but this all shows up in your account and it can also be emailed to you as alerts. So if you don't already have it set up, you can set it up so that way you get an email alert monthly for what these reports show. So every single time you interact with an insight, analytics intelligence actually learns that about you and will show you that information first. So for example, adding a new user or just checking out trends in general. Again, I highly recommend doing this yourself if you don't already. Um, but if you have experience with Google, uh, with Google Analytics, you might already be accustomed to all this stuff and just prefer working with dimensions and secondary dimensions and segments. Um, you can even still use those features with Google Analytics 4. But if you're not familiar with these terms, Here's a quick rundown. A dimension is a descriptive attribute or characteristic of an object that can be given different values. So for example, one dimension could be a city and the possible values could include Phoenix or Mesa or Gilbert. Um, and each analytic report includes a primary dimension, like a lens from which you can view that data. So sometimes you might wanna dig deeper and you can with secondary dimensions, like if they're using uh, visiting your website from Phoenix and they're using a Chrome browser, that would be that secondary dimension. So then finally you can do the segment and a segment is just really a subset of Google Analytics data. So for example, you might wanna see a report about visitors from Phoenix using a Chrome browser and then you could see that dimension and help you pinpoint the specific audience you're looking for and isolate that data in your reports. So it's pretty cool stuff for sure. All right, there's even more things like uh, explorations for in-depth analytics and insights. Um, and that's specifically in the explorations side underneath the reports. I'm not gonna go into that because it, it gets pretty in-depth pretty quickly. And then there is using Google ads with Google analytics. So it's important if you are paying to show up somewhere, you really wanna keep track of that scoreboard and see what's happening. Um, again, I'm not going to dive too much into this because we're running out of time, um, but you can even learn what happens after somebody clicks on an ad, what they're doing on your website, what that behavior looks like, and specifically, sometimes people that visit your website that are ad users, like they've clicked on your ad and visiting you, they might act a little bit differently than somebody that's just showing up organically. So that information really helps you learn what is working, what it looks like for those users, and you can even use it, uh, use advanced machine learning to understand even more about them. But by linking Google ads with your Google Analytics, you'll learn that if clicks on your ads actually translate to conversion, are people actually buying your stuff if you're paying for them to show up? Plus all that other information Google Analytics help you learn about them. And if you're not already getting it set up to link ads with analytics, you have to first have that ads account, have them up and running, and then connect them to the Google Analytics account. It's all done through that admin tab that I showed you earlier, that, that check mark or that uh, settings bar that I always call it my, my gear, settings gear. And then right there, Google ad linking will show up as a possibility. It's important to note once you set up a new one that it does take sometimes up to 24 hours for that data to start appearing. But a pro tip is to register all of your Google products underneath the same Google account can't tell you how many times I've like had people, oh, I can't get my Google Analytics. I don't know what's going on, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, well, which, which account are you using? And then almost immediately I go, oh yeah, I, I wasn't using my business email account when I set up my ads. I was setting up my ad to my personal email account. Well, that does make a difference. So you can still link them, don't worry, but it makes things a lot easier if you're using the same Gmail account or the same email address account when you're setting up all this stuff. So what do you do next? If you don't already have a Google Analytics account, 
set one up, use Google Analytics 4. If you have Universal Analytics, update to Google Analytics 4 right now. And if this is a recording that you're watching, you might already not be getting data from your website. So it's important to no longer be using the old version, but update to the new. And specifically, again, it will no longer be collecting data come July 1st, 2023. So if this is July 2nd and beyond of 2023, Google Universal Analytics will not be receiving any new data. So based on what you learned today, figure out what your business's goals are, experiment with a few things through Google Analytics and check things out via your social media marketing and other online advertising, make sure it's working. And remember, Google Analytics is just a tool to help you measure results. So if you're not looking at your results, there's nothing to measure. If you don't have this set up, you don't know what you're measuring either. So it really helps you to see if your campaigns are helping you reach your goals. And if they're not working, try something new. And that's all I have for you guys today. Feel free to ask some questions in the chat. I'll turn it back over to you, Jerry. Great. Thank you so much. I'll share my screen and um, I think we've covered all the questions, but please, if you've got um, if you've got some additional questions, feel free to um, put those in the chat. And um, in the meantime, I said I was going to share. Are you seeing the screen? Yeah. OK. All right. Um, so I'm going to share how you can connect with the SBDC if you are not currently a client of the SBDC. The um, first, first step is to go to the maricopa-sbdc.com website, and um, there's a, a link to request counseling. And once that happens, then it, Karen Linthicum on our team is the one who will see that registration, and then she will be the one that assigns you to one of the counselors based on what you're looking for, what kind of, and, and the different um, expertise that we have on the team. So you'll get assigned to a counselor, that counselor reach out within a few days to schedule an initial counseling session with you. And then our goal is to have some continuing relationship with every single client so that we're helping you actually grow and expand your business over time. And there's no limit to how many sessions um, you can have and how long that relationship lasts. And we have clients who've been with us for many, many years. And, um, and sometimes, you know, they get their questions resolved and then they go away for a while and then they come back. You don't need to re-register if you're a current client of the SBDC. You can simply re-engage with, um, with whatever advisor you had um, before. And we track your business goals uh, along with you. So we're going to be constantly asking you for how's it going, asking for some reports and, and tracking the metrics so that we can um, help you achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve with your business. Counseling is by appointment only. And again, that's if you are not, if you're new to the SBDC, just go to maricopa-sbdc.com and register for counseling. That's all we had today. Thank you so much, both to Bob and to Kevin. Um, Kevin, this was a great, really informative. I learned a lot. I've got multiple websites that I need to do this for. So <laughs> it was very helpful for me as well. Thank you, everyone. Please do complete the evaluation at the end. You should receive that, I believe. Karen, it'll either send it to you or it'll show up. So please do because it helps us know how well we're doing. It will show up in the next two days. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Bye.